All right, OTC, so check it out. I'm gonna do like real time today for fun. So today I'm running, uh, this is a uh, chopped up Napa cabbage. Um, and I also mixed in with this earlier, some sugar, um, some apple cider vinegar, and then some of um, our pubs guy, which I'll, I'll put a link there, but his uh, Garlantro, um, it's kind of almost like, to be honest with you, you throw a little bit of fish sauce in here and it's like, and it's almost like kimchi or like instant kimchi and it's good. Anyway, so we're gonna be running that on these. Um, and then doing some Italian sausages. I'm gonna run these on there. Some onions, some buns, and then some cheese. So the way this Garlantro tastes normally is just, it's pretty spicy. Um, and I honestly, I love it though. It, it, it has a great flavor. Go, I, I'm pretty sure I've been trying to taste it here and there on other things. So far, I just keep going back to like Italian type stuff, but um, I think it can go many different ways. But the bottom line is, it's pretty spicy. So if you are not into spicy, then I would, I would probably shy away from this stuff. But if you are, you'll like it. I really want to put it on some chicken, like a, do like kind of like a crispy chicken on it. Ronnie keeps talking about, um, sh cause she thinks it has kind of like an Asian vibe to it too, uh, which I do too. But I think that um, we would go even like Indian, even like curryish, and add some 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 curry powder to it. And I'm not gonna lie, we did taste it like that, and it's amazing. And I definitely think that I could literally make kimchi, though I basically just did, um, with the stuff that we have. And I don't know if you guys have ever smelled what griddled onions taste like or smell like, but oh my lord, dude. Griddled onions, like, I don't know. I don't even know. It smells so good. It always takes me to like a fast food joint smell. So freaking good. I think I could like griddle onions forever. Anyway, so I turned the heat down, but honestly, I, because I'm not cooking with any oil or anything today, so I'm actually gonna try to utilize the onions that cook down to try to cook up these brats or these uh, Italian sausages. So I'm gonna try to put them on here and then uh, this side's cold, this side's warm. So put them on here and let them slowly brown because they're raw. They're not like the pre-cooked kind. And if I need to, I have something that can lift them off. And if I had everything out here, it'd be a lot better like a, a thing of water so I could steam them, some other things like that. We make this a lot easier, but whatever, that's what we do, make do. Just gotta change your temperature. I don't know if any of y'all have seen this or not, but our buddy John, John Burnett, he makes these. He can make them smaller or larger, but this is a scraper and it's in one of our giveaways. And I just gotta tell you, <laughs> This thing is a beast and it will get anything off of this Blackstone or any griddle you guys have, whatever. I mean, and it'll also literally take out anybody. Like, you want some, choke up, you know, get a whatever, man, you gonna get them. You gonna do the damn thing. So not to mention that, what else is going on that giveaway? Since I got you all here, I got your attention. John also makes a badass scooper. And I don't know about you all, but it's so hard to get stuff off this thing sometimes with the spatula just themselves. So the scooper is like money, like just money. So just wanna get some color on these guys now. And then once they start sweating down, then we'll really be in some, in some good stuff. And eventually after these guys, the Italian sausages kind of sear up and stuff, we will be able to move them to the sides. So they'll just slowly cook. But we're not terribly worried about that right now. It would also be cool if I had some butter, but um, like this is kind of 
this is where we're at today, man. We're trying to be a little healthier, I guess, and just not cook with the stuff that we normally do. But I'm gonna still make it off the chain. That's how we do. These guys are gonna cook down, but all good. Nice and tasty like. So, yeah, they're starting to brown, we're looking good. So one of the good things too is when you're cooking at home, you don't have to, you don't necessarily have to wear gloves. You wash your hands, do all that good stuff. And you can, um, you know, use the, one of these if you want. Also like, you know, if you're moving it pretty quick, like you can just use your damn hands. People will freak out. You know what I mean? Even if you got gloves on, but people freak out. I know this is hot, but it's, it's not like so hot that you just, you can't function or something with it, you know? So don't be afraid to get over there and, you know, get, get your hands in it. It's okay. They're not gonna bite you. It might burn you. Just get your hands in there. Do your thing. You know? So right now, this is really just kind of searing them up. It ain't really, um, cooking them through or anything like that so just keep that in mind i have a a plan and my plan is well, this will also add a lot of flavor to them once i get the onions cooked down a little bit more and i don't want those to sear but i want the onions to keep cooking i'm just going to set them on top of the onions it'll continue to cook Basting dome would help with the water, but yeah. So thinking about this and thinking about textures, we don't have a ton of crunch because these are going to get really soft. That the searing of those will be good, but I think that for fun, instead of making these like super soft, I'm gonna just toast. Just a side, kind of like they do with like lobster rolls and stuff like that. So, just kind of let those get a little crisp, crisp to them, especially specifically on the bottoms. Just a little something. Sometimes that's the kind of stuff that's like, I mean, it's not in my pictures. You can't really see it, but I always think about um, what I like texture on it. And I always leave a couple just in case. Just in case it sucks. But I'm sure this won't take much to, yeah, see, to get them going. But, but yeah, just a little something. I mean, you know, it won't take much. one doesn't even want to sit so much I don't really care if it falls whatever I'm done with it done with it just for letting it cook let it roll that's it something quick nice just little quick brown gonna be a big deal put some color on them Is it mandatory? No. Is it gonna taste good? Yes. And, okay, so another disclaimer too is if you see anything here that you don't like, that's okay, man. You know what I mean? Like, work it towards what you like. If you don't like you know, something about this cook. There's nothing wrong with that. Do it some way that, that, that you do like. You know? Yeah, just find some, find some way or something that you do like and, and change it, alter it. Like, I'm not gonna, like, this is not forcing on anybody that this is the way you have to cook. 
you know, or anything like that at all. Like, that's definitely not my game. So. What will help is this, and I'm gonna do it. The walk of shame, walk over, get my basement hood. Mainly, I want to get the basting hood because I don't want to waste any time. <laughs> but throw it out on there like that. If we had some water, it would be great, but I don't. So, the hood itself can make it happen. And then, if we absolutely need it, like I said, we can't go wrong. With this you just can't throw them on there and they'll keep warming you got it see it's nice and steamy going on up there all that good stuff I just kind of move around a little bit as they cook and then honestly this is good because it's flavoring them even more with these onions and then as we move the onions around, they won't get like completely just burnt on one side. And you can see how quickly the outside of these all the way around is no longer looking, you know, raw like they did a few minutes ago. Um, I mean, they're still gonna, they're still gonna need some time, of course, but it won't take near as long. We got our runner. So yeah, this is usually why I do these cooks in time lapse because then you have to sit here while I wait around. Because truthfully, I like to cook most of my cooks, except maybe smash burgers or whatever. Even that, I'm not near as high as some of these guys, but I like to cook most of my cooks on lower heats and take my time because really, I mean, why not, you know, like have fun doing it. It's already faster than cooking inside, like m the majority of the time, just cause you could do all this at one time. Like, we're like, whatever. Uh, so one another thing just for fun, if you guys have never done this, you might as well. Um, sort of like a little cheese crisp. take much just a little thin layer of it let it do its thing keep it fall for the temp down so. <clears throat> oh baby oh this smell is so amazing <laughs> It just smells so good. I'll probably always do those time lapse videos whenever I do cook on the Blackstone, but every once in a while I think it might be fun to do some more cooks like this and talk and whatever i might do some lives there with with uh schmidt someday but it's not like a must for me 
It's just kind of fun, though. It's definitely engaging and fun. But that type of multi multitasking, power to him. Power to Steve on that, man. That is not easy. So, because it's a little thicker than I probably would have liked, I'm kind of smearing it a little to kind of help thin it out, make it a little bit bigger. Because the cheese is still going to cook, so we'll be all right. Yep, can you take that off with a crisp up? Done. Get done, son. pretty much it you never have one they're good do it a different way if you want you can do whatever you want because who cares it's your life it's your blasting you do what you want i'm gonna play around do something weird That's what i do I like to test things I like to mess around so this one is definitely going inside whatever one i'm in like this. So, ba bang. Oh, the smell of these is just so damn good. See, even without the water, like, just using the basting dome itself. It makes such a huge difference keeping that, trapping that heat in, like just insane. But you've got to remember too, all right, your Blackstone has cold spots. The outsides are colder than the middle, okay? So it's important to rotate these guys because even though they've all been on the same amount of time and you know, all this other stuff, it does not equate to them cooking the same temperature at all, all right? So y'all don't... I don't forget that, but it's true, okay? So I'm gonna check one of these in a minute. When I'm cooking stuff like this, I always just do a tester. Just to see how far off we are, cause nobody wants to eat like a raw Italian sausage or anything like that. It's got pork in it, so. But these are probably getting pretty close. All right, you want to know how I'm gonna test it? Cut it open. Almost done. See the middle is just still got a little ways to go. Almost there though. So we're doing good. We're doing good. And these still retain great color. The onions are like literally pretty much perfect right now. So I think that's all we can literally ask for. In fact, what I'm gonna do is make sure everything else is off except for the one next to it. So not even the not even the one under them, just the one next to it. And I'm gonna keep that one on low. And kind of run these a little more even. With each other. Bada bang, bada boom. So I haven't figured out, I haven't figured if, I think what I'm gonna end up doing is just use this as a top, almost like a relish or something. This guy, this stuff, but let's we'll see. My poor cleanup crew inside, I can see them just waiting for the goods.
And the good thing about like these brats or these Italian sausages is even if you did overcook them, they're so, there's so much like fat involved in it and everything like that, that they just, it, it takes a world of like, you gotta really mess these up to dry them up, to make them really dry. So don't sweat that. Plus we've got tons of onion that's like caramelized. We got this other mixture up on here with the pubs. So don't sweat that. Even if you do overcook them, this doesn't really matter. And they're gonna be just fine. It's gonna work out guys. Fat kidding me, just want to eat that one that's that's broke open. I ain't gonna lie. It just looks so like it needs to be eaten. <laughs> but I won't really need to check these again. I know where we're at. Randomized one with the cheese crisp is gonna get the broken one. But I cheated and I put the broken thing straight down. So you can't really see it. And then one side of this kind of like the spicy cabbage. Garlic cilantro cabbage and then one side of the sweet. Caramelized onions. And then just a little hit with some cheese like that. And then let it sit and do its thing. Sit all pretty like. All right, here we go to the next one. Here we are, dropping the dog, adding our onions. Spicy, so I can't make them for all of them because my kids won't eat it. But I know I will. Look at that, man. That's, ooh, that's looking good. Pretty. So, that sit around for a little bit. Honestly, what else is good too is we cooked them so slow that they didn't crack open and do all that crazy, you know, stuff. We don't really want to see. It's nice. So honestly though, like just this, probably too much for some, not all, just this though. I know it's a winner because I cook these all the time like this. But.
You know. That's what we do. Always like trying new stuff. I'm going really slow today. Just cause who cares, honestly. I ain't no hurry, Friday. We just watched a video, a live video, cooking with Schmidt. If you don't know, now you know. Oh. Going down some crunch wraps. Which I definitely love too. So there's that. Got the onions, got the all the bad boy stuff going on that. Pretty solid. We can turn off the burners on them bad boys. We split this up pretty even. Right. Left my damn gate open. So it's swinging around in the wind. Don't take much. Just we need to real quick. This will help us because I don't have the air fryer going, which I should have. But it's all good. I'm gonna do this real quick. It's gonna help us just quickly melt the cheese. A little residual heat that's on there. Improvising. Mmm, those caramelized onions, man, they get so sweet. It's gonna go perfect with that. Um, that hot garlantro. See? Melt them up real quick. Barely doing anything. We've been playing around for, I don't know, about 30 minutes. Sometimes, if I'm cool, I clean up my blackstone while I'm doing this. But I'm gonna be lazy today. I use a scraper after. 
get this easy stuff out of the way. But I'll come back out here, hit it with some water while it's still kind of warm, and then let it steam off. Easy. So that's pretty much it. Melts them up pretty good. Come over here. Also kind of helps crisp the bottoms again. Boom. 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 I'm gonna just do these last few right here. Just three more. Bam, bam. See about to change the camera angle for y'all. So at least you guys can see some of them. Whoa bam. That's them. So yeah, we got the spicy kind of garlantro kimchi, like kimchi-ish. Just because that's what it reminds me of, but it's really just cabbage and uh this garlantro. A little bit of sugar mixed to it and some apple cider vinegar I'm telling you if you just put some fish sauce on there you pretty much got kimchi we got some badass uh caramelized onions we got italian sausage and we got some cheese just barely melted on there just enough to make it stick melt it down we're not getting crazy with it same thing we're doing right here nothing crazy just letting it sit for just a quick second melting up uh one of these bad boys has a cheese crisp in it too might be one of the ones I have over here though. But I mean, that's it. Just playing around, creating stuff on the Blackstone. You know. Yeah. it take a peek get a look sorry here we go boom money take those inside